and I'm with Martha Sipes Simpson here. Um, and Martha is an author of uh, this wonderful book that I just read. Oh, can you see it? No. Oh, we'll uh, in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> it's called The Dreidel That Wouldn't Spin. And um, she's also an author of other books. And she's been a friend for many years. And she is a retired children's librarian from Stratford. And um, yes, welcome, Martha. Welcome. <laughs> now, I'm glad to be here, Alon. <laughs> and, and and how how long did it take you to publish this book? What what happened? It's been a long time for publishing this book. Um, I wrote the story probably around 1990. And um, I belong to um, SCBWI, which is the Society for Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, which is a great group to belong to if you want to write for kids or teens. And I brought the original version of the story, which was called The Dreidel in the Window. And I read it to the group and they made some comments and I revised it. And then a couple of years later, I sent it to the um, Tassie Walden uh, award for new voices in children's literature and it came up as a finalist so that was encouraging but um i sent it out and got it back and got it rejected several times so while waiting uh for my life as a children's author to begin i went to library school and i published five books for librarians <laughs> about summer reading clubs and reading clubs for teens and various uh, school visits and things like that and I'm still waiting for my children's books to be published. So um, I must have submitted it to about 30 publishers over a period of 20 years. Wow. And it was a long time. Yeah. And that, that was before you needed an agent to submit it to some of the bigger publishers. Now you need an agent. Um, but around 2012, I read an SCBWI article about a small publisher in Indiana called Wisdom Tales. And they specialized in um, books about Native Americans because uh, the man that owns the company is a Native American, but also books about all different religions. And so I figured, why not? I, I submitted the book and nine months later, I got a call from the president of the company, um, Mary Catherine Steele. And she said, she loves my book. She was waiting for the perfect uh, uh, illustrator to come along and now she wants to publish it and yay. Mm -hmm. um, and so the book came out in 2014. Um, so about 25 years after I wrote it, it finally came out. <laughs> um, and it was what well, was kind of interesting. Um, one of the things we, uh, as we were uh, going through the editorial process, um, the illustrator, uh, whose name is uh, Durga Yael Barnard, but she prefers to be called Yael, she came up with some ideas um, for the illustrations that changed the story a little bit, and her ideas were fabulous. And so we incorporated her ideas, and you know, between the author, his name is Roger, and Yael and I, um, we put this book together. But we had a hard time with the name. Um, they didn't like the name "The Dreidel in the Window." They thought that didn't tell very much about the story. So for a while, it was called The Magic Dreidel or The Miracle Dreidel. And just before they sent it out to publication, Roger came up with The, um, the Dreidel That Wouldn't Spin with the subtitle, A Toy Shop Tale of Hanukkah. And I said, hmm, that makes it sound like it's part of a series, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, and so after this book was published, I submitted um, a book for Purim, another Jewish holiday called Esther's Gregor, A Toy Shop Tale of Purim. And that took 14 months before they finally got around to deciding they were going to publish it, but they did. So um, I got two books out of this idea. And I guess the moral of the story is if you get rejected a lot, keep revising and don't give up because good things could still happen. <laughs> wow. 25 years though. Yep. Yep. But you you kind of hit the jackpot with a good editor, right? Excellent like editor. This and this illustrator mm -hmm. that, that and really actually um it. we'll be doing another book together that should be coming out i think in 2025 uh yael is working on the illustrations right now and that's not a holiday book what? that one's called a, a ring for a king at least that's the working title um and it's a king solomon story 
So, oh. so that should be interesting. We'll see how that comes up. <laughs> I it, haven't seen is, any pictures yet, so I don't know. Can, can I ask if it's uh, this too shall pass? Is that the that's it's, it's the that story? idea? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know that one. A lot of people don't know that story. Good for yeah. you. Oh yeah, I know a lot of different stories. That it's okay, that story. So, and and I want to know how you got the idea for this story. What, the I mean, twenty five years ago or so. I mean, what? Yeah. What... Well, you know, Hanukkah happens in December, and you know, you can see it already. All the Christmas decorations are up, and the music's playing in the stores, and and it's all very commercial. And because and Hanukkah itself is not that really important. It's not very important in in uh, Jewish culture. But because it's around the same time as Christmas, um, I guess people feel like they have to compete. So they're starting to commer commercialize Hanukkah, too. And I'm thinking, you know, that's not really what the holiday is about. So I wanted to write a story that was like anti-commercialization. So, um, you know, the story is, well, I'll read it. I'll read it to you soon. <laughs> but um, it really celebrates the fact that if you really believe in the spirit of the holiday, that's the reward, not all this, you know, toys and junk you might be getting. <laughs> toys and food and yeah. all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What about, um, tell us a little more about Hanukkah and also what a dreidel is. Okay. Why um, dreidel well, is in the back of the book, um, you will see that there is an explanation, a short explanation of Hanukkah. Um, so the... Uh, very briefly, I will tell you, um, basically, uh, back in ancient times, um, Jerusalem was captured by invaders. And, you know, it was it was the Syrians and Greeks, and they wanted the Jews to worship the Greek gods, and the Jews didn't want to. So a war broke out, and um, a group of brothers, the Maccabees, um, they led this whole uh, revolution and even though they were outnumbered, um, the Maccabees and the Jewish people won. But during the process of all these battles, the temple was ruined. So, um, you know, the Maccabees wanted to rededicate the temple. And Hanukkah means rededication. So in order to do that, and they cleaned it all out. And they had to light the menorah in order, you know, to, um, to, to rededicate it. And they only had enough oil for one day. And back then, they used olive oil. Um, they didn't, you know, have candles like we do now. They didn't have electricity, so they used olive oil. But it takes uh, a few days to, you know, press the olives and get them all ready, purified and everything. Um, they had to go fetch it, do all that, and come back and, and light the menorah. So they only had enough oil for one day. So they lit it hoping for the best, and it actually lasted for eight days until someone was able to arrive with a new batch of oil. And so that is the miracle of Hanukkah, is that the oil um, that was only supposed to be enough for one day actually lasted for eight days. And because of that, fried foods, things that are uh, fried in oil are very popular on Hanukkah, like potato pancakes and donuts. <laughs> oh. So um, that's the reason we have lots of greasy foods on Hanukkah. And the dreidel, what, what's the significance of the dreidel? Is that? Yeah, um, the dreidel is a four-sided top and each side has a letter of the Hebrew alphabet, um, Nun, Gimel, He, and Shin. Um, and what those letters stand for are the words Neskadol Haya Shan, which means a uh, great miracle happened there, there meaning Israel. Okay. Uh, if you're in Israel, they changed Shin to the word Po, because that means here. Um, so the way they play it is um, each player starts out with an even number of tokens. Uh, a lot of times it's Kanaka Gelf, which is chocolate covered, uh, chocolate candies covered in gold foil, but it could be anything. It could be pennies, it could be marbles, it could be acorns, whatever you want. So everybody starts out with the same number and uh, people take turns spinning the dreidel. And depending on what letter it lands, they might um, take a coin or give a coin or take half the pot or not do anything. And, you know, as in all of these types of games, whoever ends up with the most or all of them at the end wins. Um, and so that's basically, you know, how you play dreidel. And also in the back of the book, there's an explanation of dreidel and how to play the game. 
Yeah, that's it's a fascinating kind of tradition because you've got this top and it, we play jacks, right? And right. that's similar, but this top is um, very special specific for this game and this mm -hmm. uh, holiday right and it's it's yeah. carved it, it usually uh, the tradition is um, it carved out of wood or, or it could what? be carved out of wood it could be made out of clay i mean you probably know that song i had a little dreidel i made it out of clay oh, and when yeah, it's dry okay. you'll dreidel i will play um <laughs> the one in the story is made out of wood but we will we'll read that later um <laughs> but yeah that's a that's the story of dreidels or what a dreidel and is can you take tell us where the story takes place? Right. So when I wrote the story, um, I was just thinking of somewhere in Eastern Europe. I didn't really have a specific place in mind, but I figured around the 1900s or so, um, because there were you know large uh, populations of Jewish people in the area at that time. Um, and when Yael got the book to illustrate it, she came up with the idea of putting it in Prague. Mm -hmm. um, and I had seen pictures of Prague and I know the Charles Bridge is very um, prominent there um, and you know some of the buildings and everything. But this uh, earlier this month, my husband and I actually did visit Prague. It's the first time we'd ever been there. And I looked at the buildings and took pictures and then came back and looked at my book and go, wow, she really got the architecture correct <laughs> and the lampposts and everything. I mean, she really did her homework. So, yes, the book takes place in Prague. I can verify that now. <laughs> well, we should we should get you to read it because you can read the whole story right now, can't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can read the whole story. Um, I won't have all the pictures to show. Um, but I'm going to I'm going to show some of the pictures from the book, but not all of them. But I will read the whole story. Yeah. So I mean, let's see. Let's see if I get the screen to share this time. Uh, I have to press the right butt so, button, so hang on a bit. Yes. Okay, yes. this is Prague. <laughs> um, and you can see there's a bridge here. That's that's probably the Charles Bridge, although the real Charles Bridge has also just statues on it. Um, and the lampposts are exactly like they are in Prague. Um, and see how the buildings are curved like that? Mm. All the buildings have that, kind, a lot of them have that kind of curve. Um, one thing it doesn't have is that if you go to Prague, every single building has all kinds of statues and gargoyles all over them. Mm -hmm. But that would be too messy to put in a kid's book. So, mm -hmm. but this is what it looks like. And let me see if I can get to the next page. Whoops, is it going to go? Is it, is it going to go down or am I going to have to go back and do this? Let me see if it will let me advance to the next page. If not, I'm going to have to go back. And, ah, there it is. Okay, there we go. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's not the cover of the book. That's the inside title page. So you can see what that looks like. And that and then colorful, it's... colorful dreidel. Yeah, so yeah. And so you can see um, two of the letters. This is the nun, mm -hmm. and this is the gimel. Mm -hmm. And um, and hey and shin are the letters that you're not seeing at this point. So that is that one. And let me go back one more page. There we go. That is the first page of the story. So I will start reading it now. Okay. Okay. It was the most beautiful dreidel the shopkeeper had ever seen. The Hebrew letters Nun, Gimel, He, and Shin glistened against the brightly painted colors on its four sides. Nes, Gadol, Haya, Sham. A great miracle happened there said the shopkeeper to himself. The peddler held it up. Notice how it is hand-painted on the finest wood. This is one of a kind. I'll take it, the shopkeeper said. Kanaka begins in two days, and I have already sold all my dreidels. This one should fetch a handsome price. Perhaps, said the peddler, but the miracle of Kanaka cannot be bought. That may be, the shopkeeper said, but right now I am more concerned with turning a profit than I am in miracles. That afternoon, a man and his daughter strolled into the shop. They carried packages from the most expensive stores in town. The shopkeeper admired their finely tailored garments. Choose anything you like, the man said. The girl raced through the shop, piling to toys up on the counter. The shopkeeper rubbed his hands in anticipation as he mentally added up the sale. When the girl finished, her father paid for the items and started for the door. Wait, 
shouted the girl. I need a dreidel. The man surveyed the store. There are none here. We will look elsewhere. Excuse me, sir, the shopkeeper said. This should please your daughter. He carefully lifted the dreidel out of the window and placed it on the counter. The father read the price tag on the tag. So expensive. The girl stamped her foot. But I want it. The man shrugged. He paid the shopkeeper and left with his daughter. Now we get to the next page. So you see the man and his daughter and the dreidel with the shopkeeper. Mm. The next morning, they rushed into the shop. Thief, cried the man. This dreidel doesn't work. What do you mean, the shopkeeper asked. How can a dreidel not work? Look, the girl demanded. She stood the dreidel on the counter and gave it a twist. But instead of spinning, it just fell over. You see, she asked. The shopkeeper sighed. Well, then, what would you like in exchange? Scoundrel, hissed the man. I spent a tidy sum here yesterday. I demand my money back or you will face the consequences. The shopkeeper turned pale. Such an important man could ruin his business. Of course, of course, sir. Here you are. I don't wish to argue. The man took the money and stormed out of the shop with his daughter. How can a dreidel not work, the shopkeeper said to himself. He stood it up and gave it a twist. The dreidel spun smoothly for a minute, then slowed down and came to a stop. There's nothing wrong with it, mumbled the shopkeeper. Even so, he was shaken enough to reduce the price before replacing it in the window. Okay, now we go to the next page. Soon afterward, a man, uh, excuse me, a woman and her son arrived. They dumped their bulky packages onto the floor. The shopkeeper observed how well fed they looked. We want to see that dreidel in the window, the woman demanded. Certainly, the shopkeeper answered. He gingerly picked it up. The boy grabbed it from his hands. This is much bigger than my other dreidels. Buy it for me, mother. The shopkeeper forced a smile as the boy repeatedly tossed the dreidel in the air and caught it. Surely you wouldn't deny your son a new dreidel for Hanukkah, he asked, the woman keeping a watchful eye on his merchandise. The mother pulled out her purse. Children today, they want everything. The shopkeeper gave a quiet sigh after they left. But the next morning, the couple burst through the door. Cheat, accused the woman. You sold us a broken dreidel. The shopkeeper watched as the boy tried to spin it and failed. Not wishing to a repeat of the previous day's outburst, he quickly refunded the money. After they left, the dreidel again spun without trouble for him. I don't understand it. He shook his head and removed the price tag. Regretfully, he slipped the dreidel onto a shelf behind the counter. Oops. That afternoon, a man and a boy were gazing into the shop window. They carried no packages. The shopkeeper noted the patches on their ill-fitting clothes. Shyly, they opened the door. Pardon us, said the man. We have no money to spend, but it is almost Hanukkah, and your toy shop is so cheerful. May we come in just to look? The shopkeeper hesitated, but no one else was in the store, and the boy looked so hopeful. He gestured for them to come in. The boy's face lit up as he took in the wonders of the toy shop. He touched nothing, but pointed to everything. See, father, the funny smile on that doll? And look at the markings on the, low, on the Noah's Ark. And how soft that stuffed bear must be. Thank you for bringing me here, father. The shopkeeper's heart was touched. Here was a child who saw beyond price or appearance, one who understood what was truly precious. The man put his arm around his son and turned to the shopkeeper. Thank you, kind sir, for allowing us into your wonderful store. 
May you be blessed by the miracle of Hanukkah. Wait, friends, the shopkeeper called as his visitors turned to leave. I would like you to have this. He gently held out the dreidel. It's beautiful, the boy cried. He gazed at the bright, joyful colors and the letters that sparkled like a menorah's candles. It looks just the way Hanukkah feels, doesn't it, father? This dreidel is indeed special, agreed the man. We cannot accept such a fine gift. Yes, said the shopkeeper, the dreidel is beautiful. But twice I have sold it, and both times it was brought back because it wouldn't spin. You would be doing me a favor by taking it. After thanking the shopkeeper, the boy turned to his father. May I try it? He asked. The father nodded. Gently, the boy stood the dreidel onto its tip. Then, with a quick flick of his fingers, he gave the stem a twist. The dreidel spun gracefully on the countertop, its letters shimmering amidst the swirl of colors. They watched in awe as the dreidel spun for several minutes, longer than any dreidel they had ever seen. At last, it stopped and fell onto one side. They all blinked in astonishment. The letter Gimel had transformed into the letter Kuf, and another letter Shin had changed into the letter Pei. The shopkeeper immediately understood why. Nes katan haya ho, he said quietly in Hebrew. A small miracle happened here. Mm -hmm. This dreidel was clearly meant for you, the shopkeeper said after a pause. Please take it and may it bring you much happiness. As he watched them walk away with their treasure, the shopkeeper recalled the peddler's words. Though many people came to his toy shop, it had taken a boy of simple means to remind him that the miracle of Hanukkah truly could not be bought. And then the next page, you will see, um, this, is, this is the part that says how to play the dreidel game. And above that is also an explanation of Hanukkah. Mm, it's a beautiful beautiful well well mm -hmm. done book just beautiful and the illustrations really they they do it such they they complement the story so well absolutely they, she did an excellent job and uh, when we were in Prague we noticed that there were some um some lovely toy stores oh in Prague, yeah and marionettes um and oh. dolls were very very popular Absolutely. Um, yes. So it's really cool to see that. So Excellent. Oh, I guess this I will is stop so great. Here. What a what a joy to see this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's so <laughs> cool to see that. Well, I, yeah. I enjoy sharing the story with people. Yeah. And now what's next for this? I mean, you've put it on Amazon. I got my copy on Amazon. Right. Are um, it in libraries now? And, and oh yeah, I mean it's you know it's in libraries, um, in synagogues. And if you don't see it in your library, then request it, please. <laughs> um, and actually, you know, um, if you have bought it on Amazon, it really helps if you can put a review on Amazon and also um on Goodreads or whatever, because um a lot of people look for you know reviews on Amazon and Goodreads and places like that. And so the more it's reviewed, um more to do positively, um, then people um, will get to see it. Yeah, so. I, I hope that they will, because it's a fun, it's fun for people who are not Jewish, and I'm not Jewish, and I, I found the story just really captivating, and it's true, you know, it's like, yeah, if you're selfish, or if you that spirit doesn't come to you, you're blocking it, you know, I love that, that message, it's such a simple, pure message. Mm -hmm. Thank you, yeah. yep. Yeah. Um, so Martha, I'm going to, we're going to end the recording, but this will continue. We'll keep talking. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> I just want to say one more thing. Um, I do have a website. So oh, yes. if people want to check the website, it's um, Martha-Sife-Simpson.com and it's Sife, S-E-I-F. Um, 
And if you go to the web page, um, you will see all my books there. And there are activities that you can um, download. There's some discussion questions. Um, there's coloring pages. There's mazes, there's crossword puzzles, all based on the book. So if people want to look at that, they will have activities to go along with the story. The total children's librarian in you <laughs> of course. has created all these programming possibilities. That's what we do. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> all right. Well, good talking to you. And Albert, you're, we're going to see you in January. I thank you for letting me uh, participate. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and it was very enjoyable. Oh, um, it's good having an audience. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Of course, I know the story well, and uh, we play <laughs> we play it in the bands I'm in. Oh, Drake, nice. Oh, yeah. And one yeah. of them, uh, he intersperses Prokofiev in the middle, and it really is, works out well. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very enjoyable. And, Thank uh, you. I'm, you know what, uh, Albert, I'm going to just end the recording, say yeah. goodbye, and then we're going to talk some more, okay? Great. Okay. Hang on a minute. <laughs> you ready? Thank you for interviewing me. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. We'll see you around. Yes. Okay, here I'm ending it.